in this video i am trying to make a point that we don't need continuation anymore so continuation pattern was introduced in api version 33 and that was spring 15 uh, almost 7 8 years from now that time definitely there was a need of continuation and continuation did solve a lot of problems that we have in the visual force page and now fast forward seven years later i am trying to see is that applicable anymore so here there are basically three original reason that someone would like to have a continuation pattern in their solution so in the world of visual force we had an apex form and if you make any request you cannot make another request until that request is processed so that was the one problem continuation was able to solve where we were able to make a request and we get response immediately and continuation would run behind the scene and we can submit another request now that itself is not applicable in LWC and Aura anymore because the way LWC and Aura call to Apex class which is server side is asynchronously. Coming to the second point, at that time, yes, there was a limit that you cannot have more than 10 transactions running for more than five seconds. Otherwise, you will get a long running Apex error. Uh, which, uh, however, from the winter 20 onwards, which, which is an API 47, that's not applicable anymore. And I'm going to show you the Salesforce documentation after this slide. Third reason could be in LWC and Aura. More specifically, it's not applicable for the Visual Force page, by the way. When we make a multiple request to the server side code, what Salesforce did is they box the request together and then they make a single API, they make a single call to the Apex server side to introduce the in, to improve the performance. <clears throat> and in that case, if let's say multiple actions are happening on the LWC and the Aura side, they would be sharing a same governor limit. But again, after Winter 20, which was API 47, each action has its own limit. So we have a Salesforce ecosystem and we have a Visual Force page. And with the Visual Force page, would need to make any external service call out. Maybe it can be Heroku, Immunsoft or anything else. Visual Force would need to go to Apex and then Apex would need to make an HTTP call out to the external system. Now, in order for Visual Force page to pass any parameter to Apex, it mostly has to use an Apex form or some manual JavaScript. And when the Apex form is used and we can use either submit button or the command button, the request in the visual force page architecture was suspended until the apex would respond back so the flow is going to happen you click on the submit button uh request goes to apex the controller that can be the controller extension or that can be the custom controller that apex would make a call out to the external system apex would need to wait for that external system for some time then it would get a response back to an apex apex would prepare the response and that would be returned to visual force page now in this whole transaction visual force page would get suspended and i have a documentation here and so first of all apex form so in the sales for in the visual force page you would need an apex form to submit the data mostly i mean not apex form is not the only way there are some other ways as well but most common way was apex form and you either use an apex command or apex command link and when you make a call from visual force to apex to the external services uh, if you read this carefully after the request is sent to the service the visual force request is suspended the user must wait for the response to be returned before proceeding using the page and invoking any new action so read this line very carefully what this line is saying is when visual force made a request to external service y and apex next request is suspended until and unless we get a response back so that's the problem number one okay problem number one is really user cannot 
do any other processing or any other response. So let's say there's another button that the user has to click so that it has to go to the effects. That would not be possible until this whole trip gets completed. Number two was there is a there there was a limit that if your Apex is running for more than five seconds, you cannot have more than 10 Apex running in the environment at the same time. Otherwise, you will get the long running Apex error. So this was the situation few years back and we have we saw the two problem. Number one problem is long running Apex and the number two problem is the whole request or the whole visual page request is suspended until the request is coming back. So these are the two problems. Fast forward, 2022, we have a Lightning Web component. Okay, so let's talk about the problem number one, where the whole transaction is suspended. Now in the Lightning Web component architecture, same, instead of the Visual Force page, you have a Lightning Web component, you have an Apex. But when the Lightning Web component is making a call out to an Apex, that nature now is asynchronous. We have either, so first of all, we have a connected callback, right? Or you can have manual callback, my bad. I can have two way to call out to Apex, either using a wire method or I can, can, uh, uh, can call directly. But this nature is asynchronous from LWC to Apex. Apex can take its own time. And if I want to have multiple callouts from Lightning Web component, I do not need to wait for that request to be completed. One Lightning Web component can have multiple action with own its Apex method. And every time I click on any button, I am independent. I can go ahead and I can make as much Apex call out I can. And this nature is really a sync nature. So the problem number one is solved. The problem number one was, the request is not suspended anymore in the Lightning Web Component architecture. Now let's talk about number two. So number two issue in the continuation object was you cannot have more than 10 transactions running beyond five seconds because if Apex is making a call out external system, there could be the network latency, there could be extra time that external systems are taking that was contributed to an Apex. Again, this is the Salesforce official documentation, version 35 onwards, right? So let's see, let me actually change this documentation to 55. Okay. Read this line very carefully, okay? So that every org has a limit on the long running request that runs for more than five seconds, total execution time. Now the HTTP callout processing time is not included when calculating this limit. So in 2022, the second issue that I was trying to say, which uh, continuation object was trying to solve, no more apply to the callouts. So just to summarize, there is no need of the continuation object anymore if you are going with the Lightning Web Component to solve these two problems. If you see Winter 20 release document, Winter 20 release document very clearly says that the limit counts. So the, every org has a limit of long running Apex, anything that runs more than five seconds. However, HTTP callout processing no longer included in Winter 20, whatever the time being taken by Apex would still be counted. So before call out and after call out, if you are still taking more than five seconds, you are still counted again, but that is not the topic of the continuation object. The continuation comes into the picture, how much time it is sent outside the Salesforce server. Third advantage of the continuation object is every time when you make a continuation call out from Apex or the Aura, your one request would have its own governor limit and everything. Now in the Aura component and the Lightning Web component, what was happening is if there is a multiple callouts are happening from Aura and the Lightning Web component, it will combine them in a single uh, request. Uh, it will box in a single request. And what that mean is if you are making three callouts from the Lightning Web component and Aura component, your governor limit should be shared in those three callouts from Lightning Web Component. But in the winter 20, Salesforce is saying that if 
the callouts are happening or any action is happening from the lightning web component to apex every action would have its own limit so if you see here mx limit in lightning component are now applied per action previously the apex limits applied across all the action batch together in a request so basically the nature of lwc to apex is if you make very quick actions that needs to go to the apex multiple actions grouped together to go to the apex and all those group action were sharing the same limit that's not a case anymore so again there is no more reason to use a continuation uh, pattern 